Extreme 3D Pirate Ship Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hello everybody! In today's video I'm going to be showing you part two of my pirate themed series and this one is going to be a pirate ship. This <laughs> ship is so crazy, it is so tall, it stands off the nail probably a good two inches which is a lot in terms of nail art and it's got the little strings that connect everything and Jolly Rogers and the sails and the whole nine yards. This design is crazy. I hope you guys love it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! I'm going to begin with an overlay of a cloudy blue acrylic. One thing that I think is kind of fun with this little series that I have is that the backgrounds for each nail are different and usually when I do a set of nails that go together, like I know a week ago I did um, some farm friends, some funny farm animals, um, that all had the same background. But with this little series, they all have a different background and they all could be used on their own completely and not look like they're missing something. So each nail is so individual that they each have their own personality and I love that. So after I have that cloudy blue base, I'm going to encase it with a layer of clear acrylic. That cloudy blue could have certainly been used as a full covered um, color without needing the encapsulation for strength, but I didn't want it to get darker and deeper and brighter in color. So I wanted to just do enough of that color to get whatever the coverage was that I wanted and then switch to clear to fill in the rest of the strength of the nail. And I'm going to file it into shape to make sure that it is nice and strong and has a beautiful apex in it. And now we can begin working on our pirate ship. So I'm going to take and on a post-it note I'm going to draw out a template of the shape that I want my ship to have. And instead of drawing it so that it has a curved bottom all the way down like what you would see underwater, we're just going to straighten out the bottom of it and flatten it so that it can sit on top of the nail. And then lay a nail form backing over the top of your little template drawing and start sculpting out the shape that you made with some brown acrylic. So the funny thing is when you sculpt the second one, because you're going to need two of these, is you need to make a mirror image of it. So what I would like to do, or what I do, is when I'm drawing out my template, I use a pen or a marker that I know is going to bleed through to the other side of the paper, so that when you're done with the first side of this, you can take the post-it note and flip it over and the bleeded ink, or the ink that bled through, you can use as your other template. So take your brown acrylic and carve in the shape of your beautiful little ship and then pick up that nail form backing and hold it on a curve. So hold it on a curve until it's set up and once both of your pieces are made you can glue them together and as you can see your ship has a nice openness to it because of each of those pieces is slightly bowed. Then glue those to the nail. So you've got the two pieces of the ship glued together and then they're glued to the nail. And then take more of your brown acrylic and we're going to fill in our ship so that it looks like it does have a bottom and it's not just open to the water and fill in any gaps between the ship and the water so there's not like a see-through point in anywhere and you're also going to want to take that brown acrylic and you're going to fill in the seams where you glued the two pieces together so you don't want it to look like it's a bunch of different pieces that you just patchwork together you want it to look seamless so that's the goal and then also with more of that brown acrylic as you can see I'm sort of building up one side of my ship. This is to create the different levels or the different decks on your pirate ship. So create a couple different thicker areas so that there's a captain's quarters and you know everything that you need in it and keep pushing that up until you feel like it's starting to really set up and hold its shape. And once you are confident that it's not going to completely spill all over again, take a piece of wire, a medium strength wire, a jewelry, piece of jewelry wire, and you're going to press that into that brown acrylic. So I straightened it out as best I could at the moment. Then just press it in like you're planting a flower and then leave that in there and create another one. So these are for the two sails because you're going to want to have the two, they're the masts of the sails. So have the first one and then you're going to want to kind of repeat that same process for the second one. So I'm going to fill in a little bit more acrylic into the rest of the bottom of my boat and then keep pressing that out again. This part where you're pressing and manipulating the acrylic to almost get kind of a square shape on it is very tedious because the acrylic wants to keep um, self-leveling itself out and smoothing out the shapes that you're carving into it, especially since it's such a large amount of acrylic. So you have to be very patient with it. And then stick in another piece of wire. If it's not completely straight, it's okay. You can always straighten it out later. Work on it a little bit more if it needs to be flattened out a touch. A little bit more acrylic can be applied to fill in any gaps around the wire. And then once you're happy with all of this brown acrylic, then we can go ahead and start working on the, um, the sails. So I'm just adding a little bit of brown acrylic around the edges to smooth out 
smooth out those seams like I mentioned before. And then on the nail form backing to start working on the sails, you're going to want to create two of them. One is going to be slightly larger than the other. So place down the beads of black acrylic and then press them out and carve in kind of a pinched square shape is what you're going for. And then bend the nail form backing so that these two have a curve. Now that they're all set, you can take them off the nail form backing and then glue them to pieces of wire. So across the long sides of your rectangular sail, you're going to glue them onto the wire. So just take a little bit of glue and set that on there and cut off the extra wire, turn it around and glue another piece of wire to the other side of that and do that for both sails. And this is a little bit of a, a gluey process. So if you're somebody that doesn't like nail glue, I apologize because this part is definitely full of nail glue. And then we're going to glue our sails to the mast. So the smaller one goes towards the front of the ship and the larger one goes towards the back. If you don't like nail glue, this would be something that you could skip the nail glue and use some builder gel and cure it instead, which I probably <laughs> would recommend because the nail glue, it causes me trouble. But then after we have those sails done, you're going to go back to your nail form backing and you're going to sculpt two small flag bases for the Jolly Rogers. And so just, this is um, really simple little rectangles. After I flattened them out, I just took and sort of drew in the rectangle shape with the tip of my brush so that I had really nice square edges on them. And then after those are done, we can glue them on above the sails. So glue the first one down and then take and glue the second one. So you're gonna have a little bit of a height difference on the flag, on the two different flags, which I think is fantastic. It gives it a little bit more interest and a little less symmetrical. And then take some either clear or black acrylic, whichever you prefer, and you're going to secure where the flags attach to the mast and where the sails attach so that everything isn't just precariously held together with nail glue because I don't trust nail glue. I don't trust it when I'm working with it not to get my fingers glued to themselves and I don't trust it to hold what I'm gluing together either. So if you're like me and you don't trust this stuff, definitely secure everything with some clear acrylic just to make sure that it isn't going to fall apart on you because that would be so disappointing after working so hard on this guy. So now we're going to go back to our handy uh, nail form backing and we're going to take some more of the same brown acrylic we were using before and we're going to be sculpting the bow sprit or that long pointy part that comes out the front of the ship or the bow. So take that brown acrylic and then keep working on it and pushing it in from side to side trying to create a very pointy um, side on one end of it and more of a rectangular squared off side on the other end of it. Just keep pushing it in from side to side. After it's all set up, then you can take and glue that to the front of your boat. And we're going to secure it with more of that lovely brown acrylic. And that brown that I'm using is actually a bronze color. So it's got a little bit of a shimmer element to it, which I think definitely lends itself towards pirates. As I said in my previous video, the Jolly Roger pirate skull video, um, I always consider pirates to be kind of flamboyant and uh, very self-centered and full of themselves and they're all for glitter and shimmer. So in this case, adding that little glitzy element in the shimmeriness of the ship is perfect. So now with some white paint, we're going to be painting the Jolly Roger on the sails and the flakes. So you're going to do a very basic skull and crossbones. This doesn't have to be overly detailed. It doesn't have to be a realistic skull. In fact, I wouldn't, it's so small. I wouldn't even try. I would keep it kind of more on the cartoony cutesy side. So make sure you do this on both sides of your Jolly Roger, so the side that's facing right now, and then turn that nail around and do the other side as well. And then with black paint, add a couple details on them, eyes, nose, line for the mouth. And then with um, gold paint, I'm going to be taking and doing a little bit of detailing on my ship, so just a little outline for almost like the trim on it. One thing that I did to tie all of these nails together is I used a similar color scheme, not the backgrounds necessarily, but I used this gold paint on all of them and I used that bronze color on both this ship nail and tomorrow's treasure chest nail. So using those similar colors and the similar color palette does tie them all together, which does make them uh, really look nice as a set of three. So now using some brown thread, we're going to be using that to do all of the ropes for this. So just start in one spot and glue them down. So when you're gluing them, you want to look at some pictures of pirate ships so that you know where they all need to be glued so that they are glued in the correct position or correct spot. So don't just go gluing the strings around willy-nilly and not having a rhyme or reason for it. So after you have them glued in one spot, then you can kind of pull them taut and glue them to the next place where they're attached. 
and keep doing this and keep gluing them wherever they need to be. Uh, gluing these strings on is probably the most tedious part of this nail, which probably sounds ridiculous because there's so much other detail involved with it, but getting all of them to line up correctly. And whenever I use nail glue, I know I'm bringing up the nail glue again, I just can't help it, but whenever I use nail glue, I seem to have trouble getting it to stick when I want it to, or it does, it, it either sticks when I'm not ready for it to stick or I'm holding something forever and it won't set up. So that's my trouble with nail glue or part of my trouble with nail glue. So it just seems like whenever I use it, things take forever. But keep working with it and you want to start, I know I said just pick a place to start with gluing on your threads, but I would probably recommend starting out with the tallest mast because then all of the strings kind of keep getting pulled down lower and lower around the whole design. And then once you are done and all of your strings are glued where they need to be glued at the end, you can trim off any extra pieces of them so that there's not these long tails hanging off the strings. And as you can see, I'm pulling them in different directions to try to get them to be as taut as possible because you don't want them to be super loose where they're not gonna look tight like they're actually doing something for the ship. So now that I have that, I'm going to work on the other, other mast and kind of pull them down towards the rear of the ship and glue them to different points along the way. Trim off, trim off any extra thread. It's kind of a, I don't know, makes a little thread shrapnel all over your table if that's a problem for you. But just keep working on them. Like I said, look at pictures of ships. There are some amazing imagery and blueprints even for pirate ships online if you just do a search for them. And I didn't realize you would get like actual blueprints and how to build your own scale pirate ship. Uh, options on there but there's some pretty cool stuff if you are interested in that kind of thing I love looking at blueprints and planning like that it's very interesting to me but then I'm going to apply a layer of gel sealer over that background so the water looks nice and shiny and some matte top coat over the ship and even though I'm doing matte top coat over the ship the shimmeriness of that brown acrylic does still show through make sure you apply the matte top coat between the thread onto the mast or not onto the sails and the Jolly Rogers and that's it. If you missed the skull video I'll put a link to it in the description box below otherwise I'll put a link to the pirate treasure chest once I upload that one tomorrow so check back for that and I will see you guys next time. Bye!